Hi friends and welcome to Knitting at the Boxerville Homestead. My name's Carol and if I've not met you yet, it's nice to meet you and I'm glad you stopped by. This is a knitting podcast mostly and hummingbirds today. They're feeding furiously. We actually feed them um, all year so we have some that stay. I'm guessing they're the same ones but anyway today is April Fool's Day and Gosh, we did not get fooled by the weather here in the Pacific Northwest. It's beautiful. Didn't check the temperature, but we do have a little breeze. Um, I probably could have wore a knit. I was concerned it was going to be a little warm but because I wanted to set outside. But I hope the wind chimes in the background and the fluttering of the hummingbirds and the robins, everything else that's making all of the lovely spring noises aren't bothersome. I really want to thank the returning viewers and welcome all of the new ones. You guys are all just gems to me. I get super thrilled to be able to interact with you and see the comments that you make. Um, it's really what brings me back. Not very often I'm trying to do better. I really am adjusting to my new job, working day shift. How do you guys do it? Um, has been an issue. Same with my friend Kathy, um, who I never met, but lives on the opposite coast. She also is in a new job working day shift. And so we have been commiserating um, with each other on oh, how do people do it all these years uh, coming from two night shift nurses. Uh, let's see, today I have, I don't have any finished objects. And if I do, I've forgotten about them. Um, I do have a hoe. I have several whips. I have a little chat at the end. I finally kind of have the giveaway together and um, a couple of acquisitions because we have a really cool LYS now in the um, city that I live. So first off, I have, and I have my little notes down here. This was really kind of a last minute impromptu. Um, you can come over, Sophia. Come on, honey. This is and it's on my sock blocker, so it doesn't fit his by no means. But this is the hoe. This is knit in opal. And I don't remember the name of it. It's in a few podcasts. And the proper names are somewhere back there. It needs a blocking still. But I'm going to wait and block both of them at the same time. The heel and toe I did in Spud and Chloe. I hate that yarn. It's not the name of it. It's just, I hate that yarn. Super high twist. I've complained about it before. I thought about donating it, but I'm like, who would want it? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people do. It just aggravates me. Um, I did an afterthought heel. And so that's what the other one is waiting on. That's it. It just needs the heel cut in. And um, any knit, it's true afterthought heel. That's really all that needs to be done. And these will be done and I think it's perfect timing for spring and summer to come. He can wear them in his keen sandals like a true Pacific Northwesterner. How we wear, oh my gosh, I even have Birkenstocks on with hand-knit socks, if you could see them. It's a thing here. Anyway, these took me forever to knit because, you know, you've heard, if you've been here before, you know Fred Flintstone socks. My husband wears a 12 and a half double E and they just take a while and i wanted to use most all of this so i i should have brought the other one in but i left it in the house they're twins they really are i was able to get twins out of them including that thin little orange stripe on the top um, i did a half twisted rib cuff for i don't know till i got sick of it knit added in some pearl bumps here and there just to give more texture <laughs> like the sock needed it right um, and I guess that's it. I just did a basic toe. I need to get back into doing the umbrella toe. I've done that on several socks in years past and haven't done it in a long time. But I like it. I like the fit of it. It's just a little bit of a different fit. So anyway, Mr. John is going to have another pair of socks in his repertoire. Anyway, I think they turned out cute. And he loves clock color. The boy is totally into color. I need to have a sip of tea. I am drinking some licorice tea. It's wonderful. I 
wish you could see Sophia. All you can see is her back, and I don't want to move the camera. Hi, sweet girl. Do you want to sit by me? Try not to sip loud since the microphone's right there on my necklace. Hopefully it doesn't fall. So first off on my whips, um, I was watching, oh, holy cow, I can't even think of anything. Ray and Kevin. Ray and Kevin, what is their podcast name? <laughs> now that's craziness. I watch them. They put up almost every Saturday. Totally entertaining. Ray's a nurse as well, so things like that always bring my attention. Anyway, Kevin, of this podcast I can't think of, was knitting. Pardon me, I dropped my paperwork. Was knitting this shawl, and it's called that. Actually, he had finished it, and I just really liked it. And it's called the Changing Stair. And this is a free pattern, so nobody get panties on the wad here. Um, it's called Changing Staircase, and it is by. I not get who it was by. I didn't. I'll put the name up here. <laughs> um, I'd like to say, oh, I'm not organized today already. <laughs> this is every time. Anyway, free pattern. It's called Changing Staircases. And I saw it on their Needles at the Ready. That's it. Kevin and Ray, Needles at the Ready. If you don't watch it, I'm sure everybody does. But if you don't, go check the guys out. They're really talented and they're funny. Um, so I have had this yarn... I bet you I've had this since we lived at the lake, and that would have been 16 years this month. I don't know what it is. I have no clue. Um, that's really a good representation of the color. It's actually really pretty. And I didn't ever know what to do with it. I bought it at a yarn store in Astoria, Oregon. And it's still there. At least it was last fall when we went through there. I didn't stop this time. We were headed off to, oh, we were headed off to, if you ever go to, here's a tip for you guys. If you ever go to Astoria, Oregon, there is a boat. Tell me in the comments if anybody has eaten there. It's called the Bow Picker. And you stand outside and people will wait blocks in the rain and the wind because it's right off of the water to get fish and chips from there. It's fresh tuna, and it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, we were headed there, I'm sure, to get fish and chips this last time. So we didn't stop, but I don't know the name of it. Um, I'm not even sure. It's wool. It looks like a single ply, and that's all I know. So I am going to do this changing staircases shawl till I run out. It's easily, very easily memorizable. And I don't know, it's like, you know what it kind of reminds me of is years ago, um, there was another, here goes Carolyn, she can't remember anything of that CRS problem. Um, I can see her face and her shawls anyway. I want to say Martina Blom. I'll put it down here if I haven't already. Kind of reminds me of her aesthetic and the patterns that she knit. So anyway, you start, of course, down here with like nothing. And you just keep going up. It's repetitive of the lace and then stockinette and then lace and stockinette. And so, like I said, it's super memorizable. It grows in this direction. Triangular triangularly, I'm guessing, but it makes a nice edge when that's blocked. I think it's going to be really pretty, but it's pretty, isn't it? And super easy, something you can just pick up after you've done a couple of the rounds and you don't even have to, you know, carry on with the paper. At least I haven't. It's like I said, it's a great one. It'd be a great beginner um, shawl to start for somebody to learn lace and then get a little break with the stockinette and learn how to do the decreases and increases. And I think it's going to be really pretty. It would actually, I don't want to hit my microphone, but it would actually look really pretty with what I'm wearing. 
Oops, hopefully I didn't hit that loud. Anyway, pretty, right? I like it. I am knitting it on signature needles, which you know, I'm sure anybody that has these, they either are going or have gone out of business. Um, this is a 3.75 millimeter or a US 5. The stilettos, which I love, and I really loved these needles. But looking back, I probably would never buy them again. I just thought it was really a very expensive piece where you had to buy cables for any length that you wanted. I'm a Chow Goo fan now, Red Lace Girl all the way. I think they are even better than these and the price is there's just no comparison. Do you hear the bumblebee? I'm super excited about that because last year we didn't have a lot of bees and our fruit trees did not get pollinated proper. So they didn't do well. Okay. That is the changing staircases shawl. I'm, I think it's just a fun one to have around. You'll probably see it multiple times. You know how fast I knit. And I hope you guys don't mind I'm taking a drink. I've had a bit of cold. And so <clears throat> I need fluids on my throat. Um, we talked about the Arboreal sweater by Jennifer Steingass. And the fact that I was going to frog the body all the way back. And I did. I think it bothered John more than it did myself. Because he sat there and watched me and kept saying, I can't believe you're doing that. I can't believe you're doing that. Um, so it is frogged back. And it's trying to lose a couple stitches here. Because I don't... I think I have a couple of needle stoppers somewhere. I really should probably start using them. But this wool is just fabulous in that it holds its spot. And I can go right back with it. So I did. I frogged it all the way back to the color work. And this is how far. You guys, you've seen this so many times, but you saw it with a body and me wearing it. Now it has arms, which I love what I did to the arms. Or actually, it's not the arms. It's the cuff with a little bit of... Um, so the color, the yarn. Okay, the yarn is Juniper Moon. Organic Merino, 100% wool, in the colors Cinnamon and Beige. I want to say Beige, 113 and 119. I got the inspiration from, as I always do, um, a lovely yarn, Amber. Pretty much, I would say, 80% of what she knits, I love and feel the need to copy her. And I have on a couple of well, more than a couple of things, probably. Anyway, I ended up um, just doing a lot of thought about how I was going to do this for the front to be larger than the back. And we actually, as I mentioned, have a local yarn store here in town. And I don't really have any knitting friends that are in person. I have to, you know, I have several of you online that we chat back and forth, but as far as having somebody close, I really didn't. So this was very exciting to have this and to go in. It's um, called Yarn Outfitters, and it's the gal's fabulous. Carries some of the coolest yarns. I'm so excited because it's things I had never tried before but have heard about. So I went in and spoke with her about it, and she and I kind of broke down as far as what I needed for stitches, and really I just wanted somebody else to kind of validate, yeah, this will work. So go ahead and, so that's what I'm doing. So I added a bunch of stitches as opposed to doing darts. I just increased um, under the arm forward and did just a couple of rows of German short rows there. And then I've carried on, but it is more stitches. I increased by 12 stitches around. So hopefully that will do it. I'm in no rush now because I won't be wearing this until autumn. So I, again, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to have it done sooner, but really as long as I have it done by September 1st, I'm good with it. It's actually a great one now that I can just take even in the car um, and knit. When we go over to see John's uncle who lives over in Squim, Washington, across the ferry, and it's a great 
three hour drive where I can just sit and knit. So it's perfect. I'm really happy. I frogged it back. I was um, really apprehensive, but glad to, that I did it. And I can't wait. I can't wait to wear it in the autumn. I think it's going to be great. So Arboreal Jennifer Steingass and Juniper Moon Farms yarn. And I have knit this. It's a, is it a U.S.? Oh gosh, Inoue Chowgu. It's the only thing I don't like about Chowgu. I'm going to tell you guys a little secret if you don't know it. So it's a size 5, 3.75. There is an app on your phone. I don't know if it is on all phones. I mean, I don't know if it's on anything but iPhones. But it's called, a, I'm sure you can get it. It's called a magnifier. And you guys, let's see if I can get my finger on the right spot. You put it up against anything and look at this. You zoom in, you can take a picture, and then you can see things when you get old and you can't see anymore. It's fabulous. Anyway, it looks like, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, oh, I guess it's not going to show. I'll show you up here. It's that one right there. Magnifier. It's awesome. So I've used that many times to see what size needle I, especially if you're in the inside doing something and it's a little, the light isn't quite right and you're kind of knitting by braille anyway, and you can't see what, it works good. Trust me. I never say what bags I'm using because often I don't, but this, I think I've mentioned before, this is by Lowland Originals. It's just beautiful bags. She's in the Netherlands. Um, ships everywhere. Does a lot of patchwork stuff, which I love. The inside is kind of hippie chick flowers, which again, I really like. And this is her name, Lowland Originals. Just beautiful seamstress as well. I mean, just she's just a talented gal. Makes a lot of her own clothes, not just knitting, sewn. Okay, let's pull the proper Carol. Okay, next I am knitting, and there's nothing on here that's going to give it away. This is a paid-for pattern by Petite Knit. This is the Stockholm Slipover, and I am knitting this in yarn that I, is also an acquisition. I went down to our local yarn store, which I'm so excited and I'm knitting this out of two strands held together, tin silk mohair. See, there goes my throat. I should probably take a sip of tea. Tin silk mohair. And this is in the color light acorn. Let's see if I can lighter than that. Mm, it's lighter. Ooh. It's actually, it's that color right there. And this is also light acorn. This is Sendiscarn Sunday. And it is in the colorway. Oh, I lied. This is Cameo. But I'm holding these two together. Kind of. It's not a beige and it's not a pale pink what would that be i don't know but and this is not a lot to see right now this is what color it comes out this is actually the back unblocked and a so you start and this doesn't give anything away this is new for me this is a new construction for me so you start here, and I have this on some, I, it's cord. I just buy it by the, like this, from Amazon, because it's really inexpensive. So you start here. No, you don't. Where did we start? <laughs> no, you started here. You started here. And we knit down to that. And then you break the yarn. And then you come back 
and you pick up the left shoulder. Which I'd never done anything like that before as far as the construction. Inside, you pick up and then of course you knit and just start doing shaping for the V. Not a V, it's a rounded neck. I could make it a V pretty easy, I think. And I've just done the same on the right side and just barely got started on it. I mean, so basically, you know, that goes in the back and this is starting the front. And that's as far as I am on it. But I'm enjoying it. I am going to knit down to where it connects in the round, which will be down. And then I think I'm going to pick up and do... Once I knit in the round and I do the arms, I think I'm going to pick up, I'm going to block it. And then I'm going to pick up and do, I keep saying that, right? Over and over and I never finish it, the ribbing. And it's a different construction as well. I think if I remember reading ahead, which I didn't very far, should have, but I didn't, but I read some. Some way you pick up from inside as opposed to... Well, pick up wrong side as opposed to right side. I'm not 100% sure on that. I wouldn't die on that, but I think that's right. So this is going to be my Stockholm slip over. I'm kind of excited about it. I So I saw that Gaina, Tales from Cuckoo Land, another one. I'm sure everybody's watching her, but if not, she's so hilarious. I love her. She's just a good person. And I like that too. Um, she is knitting one or knitted one and she started and she said when she was doing it that it looked did you get a bird over there buddy chances over there in the sun is that it um, looked too big so she went down a size now I am doing the typical rogue Carol I am so it calls for you okay buddy did you get bit it calls for a US 7, and I'm not knitting it on a US 6 Chowgu. Um, I swatched. I didn't like the fabric. I didn't get gauged with the size 7. Funny thing is that the size 6, I got exactly the same gauge, but I like the fabric better. So I went with the 6, um, and I went up sizes then. I am knitting. The back is going to be, I'm knitting an extra, no. The back I'm knitting a large and the front I'm knitting an extra large um, because I definitely want more room for the girls. So we'll see. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Hopefully I'll have by the time I podcast again, which, you know, I always have good intentions, but they don't always come across. But hopefully next time I will at least be down the body away and maybe have like the ribbing um, on the neck and it blocked so that because it's so rolled up right now. It's hard to see anything, um, but it's really, I love the color. I love the halo that the fabric's making. Come on in, baby. Um, I just, I, for me, it's a, a color that I really like. It's kind of about, it's about that color. So I don't know, what would you call it? Do you guys, is it pink or is it beige? Or what would be a color between those two? Anyway, whatever it is, I like it. It is more of a neutral color. And I think that with that, I'll get a lot more wear out of it. I think it's going to be super cute with a white. Oh, I hit my microphone. I'm sorry. I hope you don't have earbuds in. Um, it could be super cute with a white um, button up, long or short sleeve. I think it'll just be a nice piece to my knitting wardrobe. And that is really all that I'm working on. Sip. I started working on, this is kind of an acquisition and something I was working on. Check my notes and make sure I didn't mess anything up. Okay. The Sunday, okay, so this is Sunday. Uh, Sandiscarn Sunday 
in the petite knit colorway. Statement green, I think it is. And it, I have unwound some of it and wound it back over. But that's the green. That's really the, it's, it's this green right there. It's the statement green. I want a hat out of this. In particular, I guess I'm on a petite knit kick, which I've really never been on too much. Um, I want enough to knit the hipster hat. And I didn't get a picture of it. I just painted or painted, printed the pattern. And has anybody knit the hipster hat? If so, how many stitches did you cash on? catch on cast on if you could let me know that in the comments send me a dm whatever i cast on 96 and i think it would hit fit my head twice um i don't know it says to knit it on uh, 3.5 millimeter needles so maybe i just need to go down i tend to usually have to go down a needle size but um, I don't know that that would even do it. So acquisition came from the new um, LYS in town here. And I just think, I don't know why I think I need a green hat for next winter, but I do. So what do you think? I think it's an okay color. It's not something I would normally gravitate to, but I kind of like it. I think it will be cute. So that's going to be a hipster. I guess we're kind of into what the plans are. And I also, these are prettier looking because I didn't tear the crap out of them. This is also Sandiscarn Sunday, a petite knit colorway. She has a lot of petite knit colorways, and I, some places it's hard to find. Um, and this is called Coco Nibs, great brown color. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get it out here, the color. Against, oh, maybe against my shirt. Uh, that's about as close as I see it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it probably will be a hat. And probably for John. But I'm not sure. Any recommendations for a hat? I have... How many yards is in this? 100% merino wool. 235 meters and 50 grams. So if there's any recommendations, if you've used it, made a hat, loved it, that'd be awesome. I'm up. I'm up for suggestions. Hey, and you know what? My friend Mary from Mary's Corner, um, she just lives over the border from me here, Washington, Canada. She's Canada side, although she originally is from the States, I think like South Kirkland area. I'm not sure. Um, anyway. I was listening to Finnish Knitting Stories, another fabulous one, and Jenna called her name as the winner of the 100th episode. And so I got right on, I sent her a message, I'm like, Mary, congratulations, did you already? And she hadn't known yet, she hadn't seen it yet, so pretty cool that she won. So congrats, Mary, I think it's awesome, you deserve it 100% to win the 100th episode one. Um... <clears throat> I think all I have left is that we hit 500 viewers or subscribers. That's another thing, a huge portion. I have so many people that watch and don't subscribe. Why is that? Throw me a bone, just subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, it just puts us up further so that more people view us and see us. And I know maybe it's not even worth seeing, but you know what? hit the like, subscribe, the bell, do the whole thing. Um, each time you do that, even if you're a regular viewer and I drive you nuts, hit the down button, hit the up button. And if you are watching all the time, like I can see statistics, there are tons of people, not tons, lots, hundreds of people that are watching that are not subscribed. So I would like that. And if there are any male watchers, I have so few male watchers comment if you are. I would love to know that there's actually some men knitters out there. I've been trying to get my husband to knit for years. So anyway, I said we would do a 500, 500 subscriber giveaway and there's going to be. Um, I was trying to think what to put together for it and 
one of the things I enjoy is journaling my knitting. And um, I have to hit. My husband was calling. So I have this knitting journal book, which I really, I have one just like it. I really like it. There are just tons of places to write down your patterns. You can put your yarn samples in, photographs if you take a regular photograph, print it and put it in, notes about it, what you would do differently. I just wish I would keep mine up better because what a way to, fabulous way to be able to go back and go through your knitting. Um, so this is included in it and this is another fun thing that I have and I've knit socks for it. I haven't in a year maybe, but it's a little keychain and it has the recipe on there for, I should probably cover that part up, how to knit the sock to fit it. And then you can knit whatever sock you want and they go super fast and they're super cute. And I ended up actually knitting more of them for a, a little Christmas tree that I keep um, in the kitchen. So how's the pattern for that little size sock to go with it? I'm also going to throw in, just because I have so much of this, I'm going to wind you up a whole bunch of this stuff for try-on cards. Try-on cards, I can't talk today, for try-on cord um, to go in with this. So if you're interested in the knitting journal, um, I want you to write in your comment something about, something that says boxer, since we are a boxer um, rescue family here. So whatever your comment is, even if you just write boxer, write boxer. Or something you have seen about, especially if you watched for a while, you've seen um, that we have had 13 that we've kept. We have helped rescue many. And that brings um, me to another part is that I need stories. I would love to be able to put your rescue, cat, dog, goat, elephant, tiger, yeti whatever you have that's a rescue and talk about it and talk about you and what a hero you are for rescuing truly fostering is the number one thing that saves lives because it gets them out of kill shelters or bad hands and then adopting and oh i have one more thing i want to tell you before we go it's nice to talk to you guys because it's been a while so the libby app I'm sure there's many other apps, but I use the Libby app. And in the Libby app, through our library, our library system, which is Snow Owl Libraries, we can check out magazines electronically. And it's amazing to me the amount of magazines. There's knitting magazines, crochet magazines, country living, whatever magazine you want to look at. You don't have to pay for them. They don't come to your house. They don't have to be recycled. You look at them on your device, which we do all the time, right? One of them that's on there is Simply Knitting. And it's truly the whole magazine. There's a really cute, actually, sweater in here. I'm guessing it was probably meant to come up because, let's see if I can get it, make it large. Look at this. When I first saw it from a distance, I was like, oh my gosh, but it's little chicks. It's so cute. Anyway, I didn't know if, I mean, it's truly the entire magazine. And there are so many that I am, I've been wanting to tell you guys about it for quite some time and I keep forgetting. Um, I want to go back and say, oh, I wanted to show you, I need to go back though. And my phone is like, there we go, back. I just kind of wanted to show you. So this is my magazine rack and they just, and then you tell them, you go into there and say which magazines you're interested in. And the new um, copies just auto drop into your app library app, whatever it is app. And I think it's great. I think it's a cool thing. It's a way of, you're not spending money on this subscription. You're not getting a bunch of uh, magazines in the home that you don't know what to do with. And 
I think it's just a cool thing. It surprised me. I still haven't really gone through it a ton, but I've had it for a while and long enough that, I mean, the knitter is another one that I've enjoyed a lot. There's some really great ideas, some awesome patterns, always patterns. This is the 200th episode. And this is a cascade yarn pattern. Look at this. If you can see it, hopefully it's not too dark. Isn't that gorgeous? I think it's awesome. So that is, I think, all that I have to share um, with you guys today. If we haven't met yet, um, please introduce yourself. Let me know what state you're from. Don't forget to add the word boxer. And then I'll do some sort of a however that works. I've never done that. Um, but I would, um, I, I would love to meet you, to know where you're coming from. And, and do you have a rescue pet? And if so, send the story to Boxerville Homestead at gmail.com. And I will highlight you and your precious rescue on one of the podcasts. I'm out now. Um, what else? You can find me on Instagram as Boxerville Homestead. On Ravelry, I'm Knit and Nurse. I'm not very active on there. I basically just go on there to get patterns, purchase patterns, or go over patterns that I have. Um, hi, come on, baby. Hi, Sophia. Come say hi to our friends, honey. Oh, and yes, her tongue is that long. It gets really long when she's playing or when she's being naughty in the garden, rolling in the mud like a little piglet. Aren't you? She's such a good girl. And I think we just hit the microphone or you're hearing her lick. Anyway, guys, I think that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful April Fool's Day. All this, this won't go up on April Fool's. I'm actually going to do it as a um, premiere coming so that I, if there's anybody on that watches the premiere, I can chat with you guys. I just think that would be kind of fun. I have no idea what I forgot um, to mention today, but I guess I'll say goodbye now. So if you are in the market for a four-legged friend to come into your home and be a part of your family, please consider to adopt and don't shop because the life you save may be your very best friend. And this is one of mine. This is Sophia. Take care, friends, until we talk again. 